making cheer my fun. And I'm on a list of life and singing, playing something like. Open sleigh. Hey, how much fun is it to ride in one horse open sleigh? Hey! Merry Christmas. I'm Pastor Henderson. And I'm Brother Michael Henderson. And we come to you to remind you that Jesus is the reason for the season. Christmas time is a time that we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For had he not been born and not died on Calvary, and rose with all power in his hands, we would not have a right to the tree of life. So we celebrate Jesus, for Jesus the reason for the season. So take hold of that special gift that continues to keep on giving year after year. We say to you, Merry Christmas, and God bless you. Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year to our Bethel family. Love, the Carter and Gregory family. Good morning, praise the Lord, and welcome to this fourth Sunday of Advent and to the virtual worship experience here at Bethel AME Church, where our pastor is Reverend Rosalind K. Shorter Henderson. We are so blessed that you joined us this morning and ask that you hit the like, share, and subscribe button and leave us a message in the chat box to let us know that you are enjoying this worship service. Before we enter into worship, I'd like to remind you of our upcoming events. This afternoon at 2 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, we'd like for you to join our Sunday church school in a Christmas program entitled, A Savior is Born. Through narration and song, they will depict the Christmas story. On Thursday, December 24th at 6 o'clock p.m., we'll be in a virtual Christmas Eve candlelight service. The word and the song will remind us that Jesus is the real reason for the season. Closing out our year, Bethel will host the Black Methodist Great Gathering New Year's Eve Watch Night service on Thursday, December 31st at 10 o'clock p.m. We have a powerhouse of preachers who will bring the word to end the year, and you don't want to miss the opportunity to join us as we praise and thank God for bringing us through 2020 and into 2021. Details on these and all of our virtual events can be found on our Facebook page at Bethel AME Church Evanston, and on our website at BethelEvanstonAMEC.org. Your ongoing financial support is a blessing to us as we continue to build the kingdom of God. Please visit our website or our Facebook page for the various platforms that will allow you to give into this ministry. We pray that as you give, God will multiply your gift back to you 100 times. From this house to your house, we pray that you and your family enjoy a blessed and Merry Christmas. Now, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together as we go into our worship service. God bless you.
thing that you will do. God, we ask you today that you bless the pastor and her word, Father God. Give her the keys to the foundation, Father God, that she needs, Father God. Give her the seeds that she needs to plant whatever you need her to plant, Father God. Father God, let her speak the words of wisdom so that you may be blessed, Father God, so that we may be blessed by her word, Father God, the words that you have given her, Father God. We continue to ask you to build up this church, Father God, and we ask you to keep this church in your loving arms, Father God. Keep the people who come in and out of this church in your arms, Father God. Keep the people who are out on the streets in your arms, Father God. Keep this church as a foundation, Father God, so that people may come here seeking your face, Father God. Father God, we pray every day that this church stays up, Father God. We pray that the people who come back and forth here, Father God, stay blessed in their families, Father God. And we thank you for the seeds and the foundation that you have given us. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to read John 3, verse 16 through 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. May God have a blessing to the hearers and the readers of his word.
This is a proven, proven fact. Paul rightly describes all people as ungodly and thus sinners. People lie, steal, kill, maim, cheat, distort, etc. This is human nature. And since creation, it remains the same. Christians fall into the same dilemma. There is a remedy. The secret is it cannot be done in one's own strength. Jesus tells us there is only one infallible proof that we are followers, disciples of Christ. It is when we love one another. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit, is a gift. He is ours for the asking. He can love others, all the ungodly, through us. Want the proof? Ask him. This is how you really prepare for Christmas. Now we will light the candle. <laughs> church and drop it in the mailbox or you can mail it directly to the church. Thank you and God bless you.
We exalt him because we want to be a witness for somebody else. Amen. Amen. There's somebody right now that's depressed. There's somebody right now that don't know what they're going to do tomorrow about that situation. But if you help them, lift them to a spirit of praise. Lift them in worship. And then they get a sound of God. Brotherly 
love. Although Eros and Philia have others as their focus, they can both be motivated by self-interest and self-gratification and self-protection. They are both the kind of love that's designed to satisfy the desires of the one doing the love. There may be an element of giving involved, but it is giving for the purpose of getting something in return. The third word for love is that of agape. <laughs> the meaning of this word of love stands in sharp contrast to the other two words. This word alone points to completely self-satisfied, satisfaction, self-sacrificing love. A love that lacks self-interest and self-gratification. Agape love motivated primarily by the interest and welfare of others. In the New Testament, the agape is the word, Greek word mostly used for love for God. The love for a spouse or love for enemies. The agape love means action. It means that we act in a loving way towards others. It means that we uh, might do something that only benefits others without regard for ourselves. It's not based on our feelings. Uh, Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians 13, you can have all kinds of gifts and faith, but without love you are nothing. You can be as generous as you want to be, but without love it promises nothing. Church, we exist because of love. Now, I'm not talking about the love between your parents that created you, but God's love for us. For he impregnated a teenager of a virgin named Mary with his son. For he knew that we need a savior. The first John 4 and 9 says, In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. God poured out his love upon us through Jesus Christ. There's nothing more powerful in the universe than love. Love should take priority in our lives, and love is what motivates us. Our text today, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Glory to God. God is love. One is inclusive. God so loved the world. That so indicates the depth and the height of God's love. So love indicates the ultimate degree of God's love. Nothing can surpass God's love. Uh, not a mother's love. Uh, his love is always pure, always holy, and always seeking what is best. Uh, his love is given freely without any hope or desire for anything in return. God's love, uh, because he is love, his love has no expiration date. Hallelujah. It's endless and everlasting. Jeremiah 31 and 3 tells us the Lord has appeared of the old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn thee near. His love is always given first. First John 4 and 19, we love him because he loved us first. His love is precious beyond words. Nothing can stop him from loving us. Water can't drown out his love. Fire can't burn up his love. Wind can't blow away his love. Snow can't cover up his love. Hallelujah. Ice can't freeze up his love. Death can't kill his love. God so loved the world. God, I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. So what I like about God's love, there's no qualification for his love. You remember the Jews, they believed that God only loved uh, the religious, the true Jews. And hated the non-religious, the Gentiles. But God loved all who he created. He created us in his own image. He loves the unchurched. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. He loves those who never stepped into church and never opened up the Bible. The fact is that God loves everybody. He loves the homemonger. He loves the murderers. He loves the rapists and the liars. He loves the unwed mother. He loves the fornicator, the oppressor. He loves the thief, the, the white feeder, the alcoholic, the prostitute. He loves everybody. God so loved the world, and his love is unconditional. Do I got some witnesses in the house? Yeah. Somebody ought to praise them for loving you. God so loved Ross. Put your name there. God so loved Ross. God so loved Mary. God so loved Billy. Put your name there. Because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But God still loves us. Yeah. He loves us when we mean it and when he ugly, when we're 
with children. Love on them a little bit more. They may be better. God, I give you glory. Yes, then I know that the Lord loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Yeah. Glory to God. We as believers, we need to tell a dying world that Jesus loves them. Glory to God in the highest. He loves us. He loves us. God is love. Church, the true love and true value of love lies in what love is willing to give. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you see, God's love is not static. Uh, it, it's not self-centered. He doesn't just sit quietly around while men drop off into hell. His love prompts to do something, uh, to, to love, to say. God is demonstrating his love, but God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Don't say you love your spouse and you beat your spouse. Talk to me, somebody. Uh, don't, don't say you love me and I'm hungry. You don't feed me. Uh, uh, love is always demonstrating something. You, you, you can't give and not love, but you can't love and not give. Let me say it one more time. You can give and not love, but you can't love and not give. Talk to me, somebody. Uh, yeah, some say the love of God, uh, but you don't spend no time with them. Some say I love God, but I don't want to get intimate with them. Some say I love God, but I don't want to give them no time, talent, or no treasure. God gives. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Our God is a covenant keeper. And he loves us despite of ourselves. He loves us, but we don't even love him back. God is giving glory. God is love. It's inclusive. For God is a love of world. But two, it, it's God's love is exclusive. God gave his only begotten son. Wait a minute. Before you jump off the train tracks, stay with me and, and, and for a while and recognize why his love is exclusive. Uh -huh. uh, let, let me remind you that God gave the ultimate, rare, special gift when he gave his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. uh, when you love something dearly, you are willingly to give willingly and freely to the point of self-sacrifice. God paid dearly with the life of his son, the highest price he paid. Jesus was the only one who was qualified to meet the criteria to be the atonement for our sins. Let me say it one more time. Jesus was the only one qualified to be the atonement of our sins. For his DNA was the only one that was exact and exclusive to God himself. See, Jesus' DNA was the only one that was exact and exclusive to God himself. See, Abraham couldn't do it because he was a liar. Uh, Jacob couldn't do it because he was a deceiver. David couldn't do it because he was an adulterer and a murderer. And the list goes on and on. They all had flaws. But Jesus, uh, our big brother, was sinless uh, and perfect without the limits. Nobody but Jesus. Uh, uh, nobody but Jesus. He's a sacrificial lamb for the sins of the whole world. Behold, the Lamb of God will take away the sins of the world. When he died on Calvary over 2,000 years ago, he died for sins past, sins present, and sins future. Somebody say, thank you. Glory to God in the highest that he was born to die. Yeah, 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 yeah. God gave his son up to be separated from his presence, from his glory. To leave eternity to come to earth uh, in the form of a human, in the flesh, uh, to a earth, to a world that was wicked and dark and immoral and rebellious and bitter, just to name a few things of this old crazy world. That's love. Can you imagine giving up your son for ransom? Uh, we love our children so much that we would give uh, our children up and give ourselves up. We had to give up something for ransom. We, we would not love anyone more uh, enough to sacrifice our children for them. I don't believe there's anybody here in virtual land who would give up their children or their parents for a ransom or send them to a dangerous, wicked place. But God did because God loves us. Somebody ought to praise him. Yeah. Like, hallelujah. God's love is inclusive. God so loved the world. God's love is exclusive. God gave his only begotten son, for there was nobody else that was qualified to do it. God's love is saving grace for God's 
gave us all that they got. So, listen, that's whosoever. Look, look at that. Whosoever believeth. Whosoever means anybody and everybody. <laughs> whosoever. There's no qualification for those that believe. Uh, there's no criteria uh, to those who believe. Doesn't matter of the kind of sins you committed, you can still believe. It, it doesn't matter about the skeletons in your closet, uh, you can still believe. It doesn't matter about your gender or your race. Wait, whosoever, uh -huh, again, whosoever, doesn't matter about your social, economic status, whosoever. It doesn't matter whether or not you read the Bible at any time in your life, whosoever. It doesn't matter if you sin and still sin it. You can still believe whosoever. Glory to God in the highest. Yeah, 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 yeah. People go around asking the question, are uh, uh, you worth it? Uh, 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 we look at other folks, I don't think they qualify. Who are you to say you who is and who is not qualified to believe, qualified to be loved by God? Yeah, yeah, you remember the singer Anthony Brown. Uh, he, he declares, uh, he said, you thought I was worth saving, uh, and you came and changed my life. Mm -hmm. uh, you thought I was worth keeping, and you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was worth dying for, and you sacrificed your life. God, give me glory. Uh, we are worth God's love. We are worth the love of God that sent his son here on earth. He was born to die so we may have everlasting life. God, give me glory. Man did not seek to be saved himself, but God sought out to save us. Salvation is a free gift, but you don't accept it. Uh, uh, by believing, you won't have it. It says, whosoever believeth in him. Uh, to believe is more than intellectual agreement that Jesus is God. It, it means that you put our trust and confidence in him that he alone can save us. Uh, uh, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Means to destroy, perish, means to be destroyed, uh, 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 to give over to the miseries of hell. There is no worry greater than cancer, greater than losing a child, greater than losing a parent, or losing a mate. The most horrible thing that can happen to anyone is to live your entire life, uh, uh, your entire life without a relationship with the Lord and die and go to hell. That should be our biggest worry, that none shall go to hell. Nothing in this world or eternity beyond can compare with dying without Christ. Uh, uh, the Bible tells us in Psalms 91, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forgot God. Who's a believer in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh, they are the state of being uh, that, in other words, we will never die. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. This, this, this physical body uh, uh, may, may die. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we will live on later. We will live on on the other side. Our spirit will leave. Uh, uh, live on. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. Glory to God in the highest. Death may claim the body, so, but the spirit of the redeemed will live on with Jesus in heaven. God give me glory. The truth matter is this. If you go to hell, you'll go because you didn't trust God. You didn't accept him as your personal savior. Uh, it, it, it's not God's fault. Uh, it's not the church's fault. It's not the hypocrites in the church. You know how you get, you know, folks, folks ain't gonna join church with everybody in church is hypocrites. That's what they ain't gonna join. They ain't gonna never step foot in because everybody is terrible and wicked. Uh, it, it, it's not the church folks' fault. Uh, uh, you can't blame your family. You can't blame any kind of hypocrite that you know uh, that you're not saved. Talk to me, somebody. If you die without Jesus, you have no one to blame but yourself. Uh, no one can make a decision for you. We can guide our brothers and our sisters. We can guide our children. But they have to make the final decision. Mama can't make the decision for you. Daddy can't make the decision. Big Papa can't make the decision. Big Mama, only you can make a decision for 
anybody out work your land? That does not know Jesus. We pray today you accept him as your personal savior. Right. As I close, I want to remind you that Christmas is about God keeping a promise to, to provide salvation. Revelation 13 to 8 tells us Jesus is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Uh, 1 Peter 1 and 20 says, who barely was ordained before the foundation of the world. These verses tell us even before we were was a sinner to save, uh, before there was even sin to cleanse, the Lord had already formulated a plan to redeem the sinners. Let me say it one more time. These verses tell us that even before there was a sinner to save, sin to cleanse, the Lord had already formulated a plan to redeem the sinners. He did plan is older than man, older than sin, older than Satan, older than hell. God promised to save as an old promise that shall never fail. This Christmas is the time to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's the time to celebrate that he was born to die. It's the time to celebrate the fact that he understood his purpose and he died because he understood his purpose. It's a time to celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a time to thank him for his love. It's a time to remember that over 2,000 years ago Lord had mercy over 2,000 years ago he was a great example of that love. It was that love that allowed him
thank God that we asked a couple of weeks ago about our uh, meeting program for the homeless that we do every Monday through Friday breakfast. And we asked for those persons to help us with that and we got the month of December clear. And so we thank God for that. So we'll continue with our ministry of giving uh, with the homeless and book giving shelter in the month of January. So again, if you're thinking about it, please sign up. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Thank you again for your kind and generous heart. Another service. 
We, we thank you that you kept us all last week and, and brought us to this space and time. And we've had an opportunity to worship you, whether in virtual land or whether in this sanctuary. Oh God, we ask you to keep us throughout the week as we're anticipating and celebrating your birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So God, keep us safe in the travel. Uh, keep us safe in the COVID-19, Father. God, we pray for the stimulus package that will be released, God, uh, before the end of the year, before the end of the day, uh, before the end of the week, uh, that they will come forth and, and bring forth this package to help many people that are in need, God. We pray for those in this season that may be lonely, depressed, Lord, and, and may be in need, God. So touch right now. Send some labors across to uh, give them what they need. So God, you know all about us. We lift it to you right now in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for traveling mercy in the name of Jesus. And oh God, we give you glory, we give you honor in Jesus. And we pray for our services uh, today, uh, at 2 o'clock today. We pray for our services next week and week after. That you meet us in the place and let your Holy Spirit reign. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you 